Come on, Dota, come here. Where are you? It always takes a second, guys, for Dota to come in. There we go. There we go. We are officially in. Everything's working. The timer broke at the end. I don't know why it still said an hour. Apparently, I don't know military time nearly as well as I thought. But that's okay, because we have the awkwardest of awkward. The random best of three that was supposed to be uh, kind of on schedule, but it's way off. It's in the middle of nowhere, but still, Pain Gaming going up against Sacred. I'm Mike Laura. It's going to be joined by MRP Dota for this best of three. Dude, have you casted any of the new Five patch yet? Greetings, friend. Uh, I have not had the privilege, Dollar unfortunately. Uh, but we finally got an evening game going, so what do you know? MRP lives, MRP analysis, forehead. Uh, but hey, South American Dota is always fun. You, you mentioned awkward. Hopefully we'll see some uh, taunting and some items on the ground. I, I definitely wouldn't put it past them. Uh, I think, like, just, just looking at the bands... Like you could tell, like what these what these guys like to do. All of these heroes, except for Lich, are just the four position run at you, push your face until you die. I think Pain Gaming in their uh, their previous set won with an Undying. It was like an hour and a half ago, so I don't really know. It seemed I seem to recall that, but you know those type of heroes, those type of super aggressive heroes, typically give these teams success. But then they go a little bit too far and also causes the vast majority of their failures. At least from what I've seen, but. Uh, still, it's a it's a new patch, and I'm I'm pretty sure there hasn't been much SA Dota in the new patch, at least not of you know any like real prestige or anything like that. So uh, you know, we'll see how these two teams are going to cope with it. We we definitely got some all stars between these two teams. Yeah, and and Lich is just disgusting. But as you mentioned, I mean South American Dota by nature is a bit unrefined. A lot of talent in the region, and now we're starting to see that talent get cultivated. Uh, and as you mentioned, a little bit unforgiving in the way that they play, kind of. You know, balls to the wall, everything loose. So we'll, we'll see if they can kind of hone their skills and tighten things up in the in the coming months or the coming seasons. Um, but definitely, you know, not any or not too many new faces. Duster is definitely one that that I haven't seen all that much. But Sacred is, you know, essentially not today. Of course, you know, as we expect from King Tekka, he tags up as Vato Loco. Um, so. <laughs> Anyways, I, I was told once what that means. I think it's just like a crazy bastard, as far yeah. as I know. Yeah, pretty much. So. Yeah, there you go. Uh, they were Tech previously DCSA as well, and they did something with DC and lost their lost their name. But their new right. name and logo is pretty good, so you know what? I'm okay with it. Yeah, flag looks nice. Uh, I have to agree. Uh, nothing too you know, out of the ordinary here, at least for the beginning of the patch. We've seen a lot of these kind of first. First phase, five or four position five pickups, seconds, uh, rather agnostic kind of in the way that they're approaching the drafts. People don't want to give too much away. Uh, and Radiant. of course, there's so much variance from draft to draft right now at the beginning of the patch. Um, but this is a hero we've seen a little bit of uptick in popularity in the Brewmaster. Love me some Brewmaster. I was saying at the end of the last patch that he was underplayed. Uh, of course, a new patch, it, it could mean any number of things for the hero. But here we go. Now, this is a hero. This is my all-time favorite hero right here because he's the best hero in the game. Ogre Magi with the Brewmaster is, again, a lot of bulk, a lot of run at you, a lot mm -hmm. of, I don't care about the tower, I don't care about your rotations, I'm just going to kill you anyway. Ogre Magi and Brewmaster Ten don't work seconds, fantastically maybe. with each other necessarily, yeah. but overall, if your game plan is going Five to be those seconds, super aggressive maybe. dives, it doesn't get much better than Ogre Magi, it doesn't get much better than Primal Split. Don't underestimate uh, the Bloodlust uh, hit the building's earth. <laughs> Pruling. I don't know. Either way, I mean, that's a scary off lane, right? Uh, you're going to have the, the Ogre uh, and the Brew, both very difficult, uh, make it very difficult for the the carry to last hit in lane. One of them runs at you, throws a dot on you. The other one's going to make you miss 70% of the time uh, from level one. So uh, we talked to, you know, there's been a lot of talk about patch changes and uh, the changes to deny specifically. Uh, and if you can deny some creeps in the... Um, opposing safe laners lane uh, that can pay huge dividends going into the early mid game especially if those supports for that safe laner are nearby as well uh, so not only are they losing a huge chunk of xp but they're splitting uh, what remains so it, it can be a pretty potent combo this this ogre brewmaster uh, but kind of sticking with the theme we we're talking about where uh, not too much is given away you talked about the in your face sort of approach from uh, South American Dota. Brew, Ogre fit that. But on the other side, Sacred going to respond with a Clockwork. A little bit of extra control here from the Sacred side. A lot of proactive control as well. You, you, need, you really want these tools if you're going to be answering a Brewmaster. Of course, the dream is 
initiate on him, chain stun him, <laughs> silence him, it's whatever, and kill him off without him having the opportunity to split. Not easy, but for sure you're looking at heroes like Clockwork, like Batrider, uh, those, mm. those very heavy initiation heroes. And of course, heroes like Rubik and Lion to follow up afterwards, after that initial initiation. So Sacred definitely answering this Brewmaster at least as much as they can. Uh, the Clockwork four position could be off lane as well uh Five we've seen him kind of go three. everywhere but with the rubik they could certainly do uh quite a few things versus this brew if he is going to be a brew off lane which is what i would expect uh cog is really annoying <laughs> like yeah you have the miss chance but clockwork doesn't really care about missing his right clicks or anything like that he just wants to be next to you so definitely a good answer to this brewmaster uh although i'm not really sure if it's a good enough answer against a brewmaster with ogre help yeah, uh, Rubik is definitely a hero that kind of facilitates Clockwork's intentions in the early game. Um, that, as you mentioned, as a support duo, they can be pretty successful, um, but does offer some flexibility, the Clockwork pick, uh, as they can throw him in towards the three uh, in the hands of King Tekka uh, later on. So we're seeing kind of uh, some of the heavier farmers being banned out by Sacred Side. Uh, I figured that they would go more the route of building hitters, and Terrorblade definitely fits the bill. Anti-Mage a little bit less so. Um, but I guess picking the Rubik and the Clockwork Anti-Mage rather elusive uh, as a safe laner for Pain Gaming and Sacred going to remove that from the pool. A couple of heroes that uh, combo nicely with the Clockwork, the Storm Spirit and the Life Stealer going to be the ones banned out by Pain. And uh, this Lone Druid pickup is an interesting one from Pain Gaming. Uh, so we talked about, you know, kind of throwing a wrench into the, the plans of the enemy in their safe lane. Lone Druid, I mean, he's a rather self-sufficient safe laner, uh, which means that this Ogre... Uh, can do often what he wants to do most in that early game, which is just roam around and make the other lanes annoying for the opponent. And then after you're done with that, you come back to the Lone Druid, Bloodlust is bare, and then you just tear everything down. Uh, that's really the big synergy, that the, the big timings that Pan are going to be looking for. We've seen quite a few teams go for this kind of uh, mid-game power play type of lineup. You mix in your Ogre Magis, your Death Prophets, your Lone Druids. Uh, those type of early game heroes that can also transition into really big building hitters. Terrorblade also being another one of those, he's banned out. But uh, I really like that style in this patch from what I've seen so far. And we can see Sacred are going to try to uh, get a little bit of offensive power early on of their own in this Luna pick. But uh, for Pain Gaming, this is going to be a game where I would expect them to be mostly just pushing off of this Lone Druid. You could really do some really obnoxious things if you have a blink on the brewmaster even if you don't as long as you have the split you can force fights and pretty much all but guaranteed you'll win them since you just have so much bulk on the field that even high damage heroes like luna will struggle to cut through three brewlings an ogre a bear and the main druid who's standing way in the back so uh pain gaming setting themselves up for a pretty aggressive start but I, for sacred i like this luna pick in the sense that it'll contest the lanes if you slow down pain gaming early on you probably don't have to deal with that push that early yeah, I have to agree with your initial point, though, on the Luna. There's a lot to kind of soak up her toolkit. Uh, she is a bit squishy in the early game. Sure, you've got a clockwork in front of you, but I don't know how much that deters kind of a Brewmaster Ogre uh, duo from trying to contest you uh, early on. Luna, you know, definitely the superior farmer uh, of the six heroes uh, that are on the board at this point, and um, both teams looking to kind of sure up that shortcoming in their draft previous to this uh, round where they pick up their building hitters. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the Luna fares. Feels like it's maybe just something comfortable um, from Sacred. At, you know, at the onset, I don't really see uh, a glaring kind of matchup weakness for Pain there. So we'll see how it ends up faring. Yeah, they used to, oh, in, in the last patch, Benjaz would have Luna like every other game it would seem. Mm. And uh, there would be many games where he would fall behind because Luna is very fragile, she's low range, uh, she has high damage, but again, you're looking up a lot of tank ability on the other side, so he'll fall behind, but it seems like in almost every single one of those games, his teammates would step up, Luna would get just like five minutes of farm and then bust out with the jungle with like two extra items. I'm not really sure if that's a possibility in this game because of Pain Gaming's ability to take down towers, but uh, it's something that Sacred are definitely comfortable running. Although, here's another threat for the Luna. I said she's soft, and uh, I heard Lion's Finger of Death does some pretty good damage. Yeah, Hex is OP as well, as we know, since the changes in 7.07. So, definitely a good hero again. Nice to see him back in the meta. Um, always nice to see a Lion with an early Blink Dagger roaming around to make things happen on the map. But there are some damn good steals for the Rubik in this game thus far. Uh, generally speaking, although you have to wait for its duration to expire, uh, Primal Split is a pretty easy one, and now Finger of Death. Potentially on the table there. 
uh, for Sacred Side. Uh, still, though, as you mentioned, a lot of burst damage available to this Luna. Um, and, and a good balance of kind of team fight, siege, Roche ability uh, for pain. Um, look for, I, I suppose, a mid laner here uh, that supplements a little bit of their physical damage. Probably uh, the broken green hero is Viper still in the <laughs> pool. And it, it feels like every game I've seen in this new patch has had a Viper in it. I don't know. I haven't seen every single one, obviously. But if you're looking at physical damage, he's certainly a good way to start. Uh, going up against a Brewmaster as well, being able to break his yeah. evasion off is certainly very nice. And I'm not sure, but I would imagine it also takes off the Lone Druid's Bear Demolish. I don't really... maybe... It's going to be an Underlord at, uh, at any rate for Sacred, first of all, going to be for their offlane. And as far as clearing those creep waves, Underlord is absolutely the king. But yeah. also he does some pretty good damage. Again, we're looking at some high health heroes, so you do need a lot of damage. And with the Clockwork and Rubik's Control, I don't mind the pick. Yeah, so it, it, Underlord, for me, one of the most interesting heroes in the game. Kind of a boring hero, um, but, you know, essentially, as you mentioned, his purpose is to shove lanes and gain information for his team. Um, you're like a timber saw in the, in the sense that you don't really care if they go on you. In fact, in some scenarios, you actually won't invite them to go on you. Um, so with kind of a pickoff oriented lineup with the clockwork plus one, um, having the Underlord gain some information from you, kind of counter push against this lone druid uh, is kind of what they're looking for. I think he just opens the map up a little bit more for this Luna to farm. Uh, we both know how absolutely potent a Luna can be uh, once she get uh, once she gets a good lead off as far as net worth goes. So here's you know the pick off that I was talking about, Clockwork Puck, more than capable. Uh, that duo and hopefully Underlord will be on one side of the map in one of the side lanes kind of gaining vision for his squad remaining. and opening up these pickoffs while the Luna farms safely on her side. Five seconds so there's remaining. a lot of area denial we see here from Sacred like Underlord, Clockwork and now the Puck mm -hmm. as their last pick just heroes meant to give Luna a little bit of a buffer so she doesn't have to worry about heroes in her face and she doesn't have to worry about taking damage while she's dealing it. Of course this last pick here for Pain Gaming the Ember Spirit is going to be a hero that can, for the most part, bypass that, but is also honestly not the hero I, I would really expect from the from the pain gaming side to end this out. Like looking at their other four heroes, like really tailored for this early mid game and uh, really tailored for objective taking. Ember Spirit really isn't that type of hero, so uh, it is going to be yeah up against the core Luna. You are going to be able to do some pretty decent damage there, but uh, it, it does feel like for pain their last pick could have been something a little more aggressive and really just streamline their draft. What do you think? Yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot of team fight available to the, the pain side, and I, I feel like it entirely overlaps with the theme that you were mentioning extremely early on, which is run at you and team fight. Uh, their lone druid being their only kind of objective taker, though, and them not being great at Roche concerns me. I think overall, I kind of like Sacred's strategy a little bit better. I think it's a little more well thought out. Um, but... I mean, Pain can definitely take five on fives, and they can take them convincingly. So, if they get a couple of team fights under their belt at the you know 12, 13 minute mark, I could certainly see them snowballing. We'll see what type of initiation both these teams can get. Of course, the earlier something like a Blink Dagger for a Brewmaster, of course, you can have a better time. Clockwork is going to be at a premium here for the Sacred Side, and of course, a uh, Puck. You know, these lane matchups going up against Pain. Yeah. Don't really seem too too difficult uh at least not where they're going to be like constantly under threat of dying like you're looking at puck underlord these heroes that are just really really difficult to kill and even though yeah. ogre is one of the best heroes at pressuring those type of heroes you can only pressure so much and you know other heroes brewmaster lone druid they're they're dangerous yeah but keep your distance and it should be very possible to survive so mm -hmm. yeah i do think that sacred have themselves a, a pretty good setup here but i I've, that is very possible that i'm also underestimating the power of this mid-game push here from Pain, like this mid-game push yeah. with the bear having an item or even without any item just the demolish on the bear like they can take so much of the map and then at that point ember spirit really capitalizes on that just because yeah. hey you have full map control it's time to do some shenanigans with boots of travel yeah lone druid is kind of what puts it all together for them he's going to be the hero that forces sacred to react else lose all their towers uh, Underlord, you know, in general, we talked about kind of getting that level four in in the firestorm and just shoving down one side of the map. It's going to be very hard to do against five heroes. And uh, what you definitely want to do to some extent uh, with Underlord is force him to five men early, 
Uh, he's good at a, a good in team fights once he gets some items up from constantly sitting in the lane and farming um, those always valuable lane creeps. But uh, earlier on, you can definitely kind of exploit the fact that his skills in and of themselves don't do all that much. Uh, so he really does need items to kind of contribute as far as five on fives go. Um, but yeah, th it'll be an interesting dynamic here. I agree with you entirely that that pain can certainly run them over um, ra rather early on if the lanes go well enough. It's been quite a long time since I've seen these guys play. So long, in fact, that my mic isn't open in Dota TV. The worst thing in the world, dude, is when you forget that your mic is open because you're casting and you start talking to yourself in a real game. And then people are like, like what the hell is wrong with phase. this guy? <laughs> you start yelling at people. It's, it's bad, yeah. man. There, and there are very few people on the planet who have the privilege of discovering how bad that is. It's yeah, bad. I've been I've been caught singing in the uh, pick face. That's for sure. <laughs> but... <laughs> Get the uh, crinkle of the potato chip bag. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Couple crispy minis in the in the pick ban face. Goddamn nerds ruining my Dota 2 games. <laughs> Get out of your basement, re. So so the question is really now: Why does Ice Frog like the Radiant side better? Because the logo on the Radiant side is in an Aegis, and the logo on the Dire side is in some, some rocks. Now what's the deal with that? Favoritism, man. These rocks don't even look good. <laughs> but I guess it wouldn't be South America without a pause. Um, so. Yeah, that's by far the worst part of South American Dota. <laughs> it pauses I... like every five minutes. It's terrible. But yeah, I'm actually... Maybe they like paid extra... For cool, cool, uh, cool logos. Maybe game mm -hmm. two, switch sides, and then it's gonna be the dire with the cool shields. Cause pain, no, uh, whose palms to grease. <laughs> I think a lot of this, uh, this match to get back to Dota a little is gonna come down to the mid lane. Um, we'll see how how often or how uh, much time Duster on the Ogre Magi actually spend in the mid lane, making life difficult for Leo style. But I think if the puck the puck can get a early enough initiation tool or even veil um that the the clockwork at level six is a little more useful than the brewmaster so yeah. i mean it's yeah. also it's it's duster the ogre magi but it's also when or if king rd are, is gonna make those yeah. rotations like you're looking at killing off a puck ogres stuns and control mm -hmm. is really really bad as far as you know other forms are concerned but lions are really really good so you get level three on the hero you could definitely kill off that puck so we'll see if Sacred are able to protect that puck. Just have the obs up. Make sure they have tabs on the lion. You land a single hex on the puck, and he's pretty much just dead. So uh, yeah, I want to see where King RD is going to roam around. We can see Boots first on King RD, the lion. So he is mm. definitely planning on moving around quite a bit. And Boots first not on the Ogre Magi, a hero that usually has that job. So uh, you know, if it was me, I'd be going Boots first and Ogre Magi every single time because I don't give a damn about <laughs> my team. But for sure, King RD... Has some plans at moving around, and they really do need to move around. Get Masha a little bit of, of a lead up against this puck, because otherwise the puck versus Ember Spirit matchup, like it's not terrible for the Ember, but you really would rather not, especially yeah. since he's uh, apparently planning on building up a poor man shield, Ember Spirit. Good luck with that. <laughs> uh, unfortunate. Maybe it'll work one day. <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> Rip poor man shield. Uh, it was nice knowing you. Iron Talon, not so nice knowing you, but you can rest in peace as well. Um, yeah, interesting. I guess their thoughts are in alignment with yours in the sense that they feel King RD can perhaps be a little bit more influential as a roamer uh, than can Duster as he's taken kind of the harder five as far as the uh, item loadout goes. Nice little change, though, to the you know the tangos that we get five now. Uh, makes this boot first build, I wouldn't say you know a little more viable, but a little bit of a extra boost to quality of life with the extra tango you can pull some over to the mid laner and still have a good amount of regen on the other end the uh boots first hero it's gonna be the clockwork uh, again what, what you would expect given the yeah. clockwork and rubik setup here on sacred but uh we do see pretty often clockworks picked up in that four position role and then their enemy mid lane is going to be like a quap their enemy off lane is a puck and their enemy safe lane is an anti mage you just can't kill anyone that's Definitely not what's happening here. For Matthew, he has options. He has a lot of options as to who he's going to kill off. Maybe not an Ogre Magi, but none of these heroes from Pain Gaming will really have any escapes. If they get caught yeah. in the cogs, they're staying in the cogs. So Matthew has at least a potential clockwork game where 
wherever he goes, he can get kills. And that's that's really, really deadly. Yeah, it feels like Tavo may be the most vulnerable. Um, definitely can get some work done mid lane. But as I said, as I mentioned previously, I think they're gonna both teams are going to spend a good amount of attention here in towards their, their mid laners. So we'll see what he can get done. But as you mentioned, not the most mobile cores. Uh, Lone Druid, probably the most difficult kill of the three. Uh, for Matthew, so we'll see if he spends any time looking at HFN, and definitely HFN, kind of the star of the pain gaming side. So we'll look if they uh, put a put high stock into shutting him down uh, early on the LD. Of course, you know partly the reason you picked that Lone Druid is he is very difficult to shut down. Tavo's going to be scouted here um, by the ward just placed by Matthew a moment ago. As he makes his rotation up. Let's we'll see if they look to go on him. Thirty seconds to battle. Mm, this is uh, a pretty tanky level one hero with. Additional tank yeah. heroes that could be right around the corner, and they are right around the corner. Ogre Magi, he's the king of tanks, and he is going to be pushing forward. They are all going to be spotted. Lunar Blessing is very powerful, but it's not powerful enough to win you a 3v4. So they're ha going to have to concede this boundary rune. Pain should get three. Uh, there is actually a little bit of a move on the bottom lane. King RD is going to use his the TP scroll to get down is. here. Just wants to get that stun, and it's going to be two bounty runes for two. Okay, well that was really anticlimactic. Tango <laughs> up on this top fight though. They're gonna start fighting it out. Ember Spirit's gonna get lifted back. That actually doesn't do much now. Oh, Masoku's in a lot of trouble. His TP gets canceled. And he's definitely gonna be first blood if Masha actually ever right clicks him. There we go. Got him. Yeah, it's so cool to see all these kind of plays where uh, the teams are spending more time in towards the runes because they have that TP off the bat. Um, but still, I mean, Leo style, he's going to get his block off. Now the wave is up on his side. Searing Chains has been skilled up by Masha as well. I don't know if this is necessarily ideal for pain gaming. I mean, definitely the extra gold is nice for this Ember Spear. But in an already disadvantageous lane matchup, uh, Leo style going to have himself three last hits and a deny under that first wave. Level two already. Ogre Magi is setting up to be that annoying hero versus Leo style, but... Uh... Ignite right now is like impossible to land versus Leo style, so good luck. That's uh, it, it's a tough lane to be an Ogre Magi, and there aren't really many lanes that can be said about that. So, uh, I'm not really sure if Duster can do anything here. Leo style, as you said, already with this just small, small lead, thanks to that time kind of wasted, is uh, gonna mean it's a pretty good lane situation here for the puck, and a pretty bad situation here for Duster. Maybe thinking about going down towards the bottom lane, but. I mean, killing off an Underlord is no easy feat. He is a hero that will rival the tank ability of an Ogre. Yeah, granted, though, if you, you want to kill him, you want to do it early. Uh, he doesn't have the Atrophy Aura right now. Uh, actually, just skilled it up, so he just did, just hit his level 2. So it gets, you know, infinitely more difficult to kill. Speaking of tough lanes, Brewmaster, uh, I think he's going to fare equally poorly in the top lane um, as compared to, you know, the, the Ogre trying to get things done in the early game. Very killable if he walks in range of this support duo, so... Uh, Masoku and Matthew posing a uh, Matthew, excuse me, posing a f threat there. This lane is just not fun for the Brewmaster. Up until the point where he gets his own boots, it does get just slightly better because he could uh, kind of keep pace with the enemy clockwork and keep himself out of that dangerous cog range. But till that point, yeah, I'm not really sure how he's going to get a lot of this lane. He'll, he'll cast as many hazes as he can, just try to mess with this Luna at least as much as he can, but. Uh, I, I don't expect him to be having a great time, especially with this positioning from Matthew. Like, this is a spot you play as clockwork if you're looking for the wraparound, if you're looking for the aggressive dive. And the creep wave is actually pushing pretty far in, so Tavo is going to get quite a bit of experience here. There were a couple pulls from this Rubik, but uh, just not quite enough. Yeah, I guess the pulls didn't end up denying uh, creeps, but it looks like they may be able to control this wave and keep it back. Uh, Matthew rotating and did find the bounty rune away from uh, the Brewmaster, so that's always kind of a feels bad man. Uh, recently, Duster was spotted bottom lane by King Tekka, so could maybe catch Leo Style by surprise here in the mid lane. Uh, Radiant Ward will scout Matthew's movements on the clockwork as well, so they'll perhaps be kind of guaranteed that Leo Style is a little bit vulnerable if they can catch a chains. Masha's kind of playing it cool for right now. He's taking a lot of damage. Orb isn't going to do anything up against the shield, but just right clicks from the puck. 81 base damage is no joke. Chains do go out, but the Ogre Magi is nowhere to be found. Duster is doing something in the jungle, waiting patiently, let's say. Uh, ultimately, just a little bit of damage traded. This bottom lane, though, I mean, I said killing off the Underlord is, is no easy feat. And though that may be true, HFN has got an iron grip on this lane. 23 CS is great, but 14 denies? Man, that hurts. Yeah, definitely. And as we mentioned earlier, Underlord, not necessarily a hero that plays well from behind. He does want to get 
levels and farm, doesn't want to sit in lanes, buy his lonesome, um, get some items up. So that could be a detriment to kind of the pace uh, that Sacred want to play. Um, being able to kind of open the map up for their Luna, just take picks here and there, but not full scale engagements until she's ready to fight. Speaking though uh, of Masha in that mid lane, he's done very admirably as far as CS goes, pretty much at parity before this wave uh, with Leo style. So uh, a little bit of that early Ogre presence paying dividends there, but also just um, well played by the Ember Spirit in, in a tough matchup in the mid lane. They do have eyes on Duster. Duster does not quite know about it. Now caught with the battery salt as well as the cogs. Luna just has to start right-clicking, and they will lift him out of the cogs into the bump back, actually, for additional CC, as if that was even necessary. Duster perhaps didn't realize he was standing right on top of an obs, but for sure this lane with two points in Lunar Blessing now on the Luna does do quite a bit of damage. And again, Tava with only one point Haze can't really do all that much to save a friendly ogre, so... Uh, just stepping a little bit too far in. And that's a threat for the Ogre. That's a threat that uh, for Tabo as well. They can really easily kill him with the same exact thing. And they're going to get going on him. He's going to try to dig his way out to the north. But that's not how you escape. So, yeah, yeah he was pretty much dead anyway. Not really he sure about that. But, uh, you know, at a certain point, you're just screwed as a brewmaster. He had nine wand charges, but just kind of accepting his fate there. We talked about the potency of the, the Rubik Clockwork duo. And... And we see a couple of missteps, I suppose, from Payne's side and two heroes getting punished. Nice for Ben has to be, uh, Ben Jazz, excuse me, to be in on that uh, experience as well. But he does miss out on a bit of CS, so. Got a wave behind the, the lone druid, but nothing to really write home about. And a nice couple of kills for Sacred, gonna put them up in the lead 2-1. Midas, lone druid, it's five minutes, 30 seconds in. That is an insanely fast Midas on any hero. So he's going to be rolling in the dough, but uh, so is the Luna because it looks like she's going for another kill on Tava with the help of her buddies. Matthew's doing the damage. Bottom battery assault. Well. is going to beam him down. Gang Tekka in trouble, and he's going to be brought down behind his tower. So almost simultaneously, both offlaners going to take a spill. Of course, uh, the, uh, the, the bear leveled up as well, so they can start to put some punishment into uh, this tier one uh, bottom. Oh, the creep be. wave skipped it, though. Rip. Okay. <laughs> Diving a little bit too deep and they lose a creep wave. Uh, still, it's going to be a decent amount of damage. And they do get Hex oh, on the puck style. with chains and an impale. He should be going down here. They have the fear. Chain stun is not perfect. Leo style has an orb out and a small base shift. Jumps out of there and we'll be fine. Matthew drops some cogs. Those don't really do all that much. It's going to separate him from safety. Thinking about going for that courier, but the courier should have the yeah. shield. It actually didn't. But at any rate, the puck is going to survive. Chain stun was pretty good. Just not enough damage at this point with these heroes. Mm -hmm. Nice, uh, very calm play from Leo style there. Unfortunately, just short of level six on Masha's Ember Spirit. Else that uh, triple remnant bomb would have easily killed off Leo style. Uh, very nice play by Matthew. Remember the changes to Dream Call now. It's not doing damage on cast, only a damage on break. Uh, tried to use the cogs to break those heroes uh, out of the coil, but just short as far as uh, distance goes. If you can do that just once or twice, uh, that's a bomb of a nuke. And the Rubik can maybe get that done as well with that telekinesis. Mm -hmm. You never know. His little bit of displacement. You do see the Rubik 1-2-1 one, one, in a little bit of early null field and is keeping it on the offensive version. But uh, he may need some defensive version right now because there is a wraparound set up on Leo style. King RD leading the way is going to land yet another hex. Impale is there. They should have an Ogre Fire Blast as well. Leo style still not dead. Now here comes the Eclipse from Banyaz. Doing massive damage with a coil that's refreshed already. Duster is going to almost snap the coil. At any rate, is going to die. Banyaz gets a double kill. And Leo style, the puck not going down without a substantial fight. Teleporting in the Luna is a luxury you get with few heroes to teleport in your one position. But Luna probably does it the best. Yeah, so 900 damage coming out from the Ember. And that's exactly what we see is that triple fire remnant um, being activated on the puck. But, and he has no contingency plan. No way to get out and a very... A wise CP from Ben has, and uh, he's going to get himself a double kill, much needed. That's where the puck all chat's worth. Meanwhile, Tavo feeling safe in the top lane, and he actually does have support inbound in the form of King RD below, but King RD may just run into his own death. It's actually going to tip 
the sacred side to a ward now the primal split gonna come out the boulder will connect onto the clockwork they'll throw him up in the air masoku in trouble taking a lot of damage from that fire remnant they'll even rotate in the lone druid and the ember spear coming through the entire lineup of the radiant side they'll get the fear off onto the clockwork and a double kill for hfn this is likely gonna mean a lot of pressure into this tower as well leo style on the puck just putting in a few right clicks into the uh, tier one mid lane as king rd uh, rotates in to dissuade him from any further punishment so a very nice and uh, objective minded move coming out from king gaming towards that top lane as far as rotations to turn around a fight luna is much better than lone druid but as far as killing off objectives lone druid at this point with the demolish on the yeah. level seven bear i guess uh, level four bear being level seven it's all good they're going to catch duster on the bottom lane battery salt doesn't do nearly enough damage though with the rotations coming in they'll try to get him out with the rift and they should be fine uh any time any day now it's gonna be close and they will actually get out tried for the flare kill on the ogre magi just fell short of the damage necessary there uh going a little bit deep but ultimately the tower on top lane was taken down this lone druid 2800 gold already yeah i mean this guy's gonna be absolutely loaded he is absolutely loaded uh really it's a, gonna be a tough game if they don't actually find some pressure on hfn yeah they need to check him we mentioned it early on that you know he's not only uh the hero to be concerned about but the player to be concerned about for paying gaming side uh, and he's had kind of free reign in this early game. Really nice job distributing their resources as well. Pain Gaming as they get those two pickoffs. TP the Lion, one support mid. TP the Ogre, one support bottom. So not committing too much as far as, you know, if they TP into their death, but just enough to deter any uh, reactionary pushes coming out from Sacred side. So no trade for Sacred being found. Two kills and a tower going the way of Pain. Well, now let's see how good Benyaz is at farming this Luna. I, I was singing his praises before. Go into the jungle as Luna, wait five minutes, pop out with two additional items. Is pretty standard fare for this hero controlled by Benjaz, and we'll see if it's going to be the same. Pain Game may have only taken down one tower thus far. The Lone Druid uh, should be looking to do just a little bit more soon, though. He already has 3,400 yeah. gold towards his Radiance, and a little bit of squabble in the dire jungle. Looks like it's going to be yeah. Ancient scouted out. I'm not sure if Pain Gaming can do anything about that, but sooner or later, and it's probably going to be sooner given the farming of the Lone Druid, these tier 1 towers are going to start to fall, and at that point, jungling as a Luna is just so much more dangerous, especially up against an Ember Spirit. Yeah, you, you never want to see this as well. King Tekka, he's jungling on the Underlord. Really want him to be uh, able to show some ways, as we talked about early on, especially now that Ben Jazz does have that Mask of Madness. So he's going to be able to accelerate his farm as long as he's given the space to do so. Savage Roar, not in uh, range in time for HFN. Uh, and the scan will you know, briefly reveal. Meanwhile, bottom lane, no jump forward. Clap is going to find King Tekka. They get the boulders and the finger of death, finishing him off hastily in the bottom lane. Matthew was rotating in to try and help out his comrade, but it's going to be a little bit too late to the fray. And King RD will pick himself up the kill. Well, the brew is still here. They do know that he has a blink dagger at this point. Matthew does have three points in battery assaults. Dire scan is going to be green you know it looks like that shouldn't be right tavo is gonna get caught by the hook shout the orb through they'll take him down how the hell did the dire not scan the lion there i i, I don't know what the hell what that was about but either way they'll kill off the brewmaster and uh you know absorb the loss of that first blink dagger it's pretty much guaranteed that you get something done with that blink uh the first usage of the blink and the clap and the split but uh, a decent turnaround for sacred for sure mm -hmm. Up to the top lane, the Underlord will go, and now we're already seeing, with that tier 1, you know, so much attention given to that tier 1 top lane, you know, sub 10 minutes being able to take it out, now they'll invade the Dire Jungle, they get the Searing Chains off as well, on the Underlord. Do not want to fight into the Shrine, you can teleport whoever you want in, even with no threat of Hookshot just yet, yeah. don't want to tango in the jungle when... But there's a shrine right there, and of course the Luna has an Eclipse. It's only level 1 Eclipse for right now, but that is uh, still an ill-advised move for the pain gaming side. They'll back off, and I think that's the right decision. Still, they are working on that Radiance, and speaking of, we should have a Radiance any minute now. They're going to catch Duster with a beam. Uh, missile is going to give them a little bit more vision. Rubik looks like he's running at a pretty good angle with the Hookshot. They don't need to worry about the angle. They will grab Bloodlust, and Duster is going to fall. Now, can they kill the bear as well? Hell yeah, they can. That Firestorm's doing so much damage to that poor panda. Wow. And that'll and be is... not only a kill, but a lot of extra cash. Plus, Bloodlust stolen yes. on Benjaz. Oh, baby, that's some damage. 
It is a level 3 Bloodlust, so not just the damage, but the move speed as well going to be really nice um, against kind of a slow initiator in King RD for the time being. Of course, they do have that blink uh, from the Broodmaster, uh, as you mentioned earlier, but always a nice spell to steal. Masoku, though, speaking of stealing that spell, he's going to be in trouble and he's going to be brought down rather quickly. So just one cast of Bloodlust for Benjaz, unfortunately, you won't be able to benefit from that going forward. And again, back to this top side of the map, Pain will go, continuing to try and occupy uh, this Luna's jungle. And with their tier one still standing in the bottom lane, makes it all the more difficult for her to traverse the map uh, down south and try and farm there. Looking for their second tier one of the game, Pain Gaming will posture up rather aggressively in towards the mid lane. Rocket Flare, don't think it scouted out that Ember there, and now he's going to rotate forward, finds the slight chains. Brewmaster up on the high ground as well, and he will zip out uh, for fear of getting silenced on the Ember. Stolen. Masoku does have a couple of remnants. You do steal the three, so he is going to be a little bit of a mobile threat here, but HFN being level 12 on the Druid, has level 2 battle cry and battle cry is the most OP spell in all of Dota, no kidding. Matthew's gonna jump in, catches top, but he does have the ability to split. If not for the silences, they will chain some enough to get him down. The bear's taking quite a bit of damage as well, despite the radiance. Ben just, just dishing right now. In the back, there was some sort of interference with Masha, but just playing some games with the Rubik, just trading fire remnants, I suppose. Ultimately, it is just gonna be initiation onto the Brewmaster. And that is going to be that importance of the clockwork that we mentioned earlier. This guy needs to land those initiations. That is how you get Pain Gaming out of that siege position. And despite, you know, a success in the mid lane, there's no primal split used. And what I take out of that team fight is how much damage that bear did. Just with a couple of right clicks uh, on those few heroes. Already having the radiance here. 10k net worth 15 minutes into the game for HFN. This is extremely concerning. Uh, if I'm a sacred side. On the other side, Benjaz does, you know, farm up a couple of stacks here. Uh, one of those being an ancient stack. So, you know, he's keeping relative pace with this lone druid. But, you know, having the Mask of Madness, I feel that in team fights, uh, HFN just a little bit more influential here. Uh, and looking maybe to queue up the Midas is Leo style. So, perhaps with the Underlord and the Puck, they feel that they have enough wave clear to stall this one out. And he is going to pick it up here 16 minutes in. That's a brave call for sure, because you yeah. can tell just by looking at how many towers have dropped the plan for Pain Gaming here. Puck already does have the Veil, so he can still do quite a bit of damage, but uh, this is going to be uh, an item pickup that may end up biting him if this lone druid keeps playing as he has been. But that Demolish is going to go to work, and off in the south, King RD is going to get spotted out by the clock, but a jump in, oh, Hookshot is going to stun Taba, which lets them kill off the lion. Matthew for sure is going to fall here. But that was a great hook shot there by the Clockwork to at least make sure he didn't die in the middle of nowhere trying to cheese out a kill on the enemy's support. Uh, is going to stop the push on this bottom lane at the end of the day as well. So as far as space creation, I think we could call that a success, especially just looking at Benyez on the opposite side of the map just farming it up. So if they can get away with more of those plays, more stalling plays, just pick off the hero here, kill off the Brewmaster yeah. here, this Hanumitis on Puck can get them some serious, serious value in the gold and yeah, just rolling in towards that Blink Dagger. That is a big deal. Yeah, very interesting that they were actually uh, deterred entirely from pushing into that tier two just from the death of the lion. But as you mentioned, that space uh, created by Matthew. So uh, didn't even attempt the Roche as well. They, they TP'd the bear back. I figured they might wait, make their way north and go into the Roche pit with uh, the clockwork on the sidelines for 30 seconds. Um, but perhaps, you know, thinking that Leo style has the gold for a blink in addition to his veil at this time, just playing a little bit safe with their lead. Uh, they do have a decent amount of vision, though, the Radiant side. Uh, so they should be able to see that this puck doesn't have uh, a blink sometime soon. Although, maybe a bit of a, a, a false positive for them here in the bottom lane. They'll see the Luna and the Rubik. The rest of the lineup, though, for Sacred is smoked up. This will open the window for them to push into the top lane where they see the Luna and Rubik. Oh, here comes um, the Underlord. They don't know how many heroes he's actually bringing in. It is going to be three heroes. So. Lone Drew is immediately going to push in. Masoku gets a lot of cover from that Pit of Malice, covering the entire entrance point, letting them let loose with the Eclipse. The Bear, I think, has fallen. Masha taking a lot of damage from Benyaz as well, and they'll take down two immediately. HFN soon to follow. Oh, that Pit from Tekka was absolutely godlike. Now chasing yep. down for the last Brueling. They're not going to kill it, but I think they should be able to stun up the main Bear. Yes, they will, and they'll kill him as well. 
That is zone control at its finest. They were able to split up the fight absolutely perfectly, and at that point, man, Eclipse is king. Yeah, and, and the Ember Spirit for Masha dove kind of all over to the east. One, maybe to avoid the root, as you were mentioning, uh, but he kind of it commits in for a Rubik. Masoku, as we saw earlier, had that stolen Fire Remnant. He makes it down to the low ground, and then the coil onto three heroes after the four hero uh, root coming out from the, the pit lord. Beautifully played and set up by Sacred. They TP right on top of the tower, uh, and knowing uh, that pain is forced down to the south where Leo style uh, and Matthew flank them. So really nicely set up by Sacred there. Sacred not looking to stop just yet. Matthew just has a couple seconds. Oh, he's gonna jump right into the clockwork. Masha does have another jump out. Matthew has a hook shot, but he really doesn't want to chase that far for an Ember Spirit. Uh, just a little bit too late there on the reinforcements from sacred but still they're feeling themselves double damage rune on the luna she'll try to just kind of backdoor this tier one should be able to get it down without too much of an issue uh that was I mean, that's exactly what these picks the clockwork the underlord are designed to do in relation to this luna just get her space yeah. just get her a little bit of range to fire in and if you can land an eclipse like that why the hell not so it's gonna be pain gaming definitely having to Choose their fights a little bit more carefully next time. Want to take it in a wide open area like near these dire ancients where you can approach from many different angles, get a surround or something like that. Uh, fighting into a narrow quarter like that is very rarely good. And up against yeah. an Underlord and a Clockwork and a Puck, it is particularly bad in this game. So as far as, again, stalling for time, winning a team fight is the best way to stall for time for Sacred. <laughs> yeah, and not only fighting into, you know, what was to some extent a choke, but an area of the map where uh, at a juncture in the game they had, uh, where they had a lot of vision across the map, that was an area where they were almost completely blind. Um, but they saw, you know, as, as we mentioned, it was nicely set up by Sacred. They saw the Luna and the Rubik bottom. Uh, they figured that they were just looking to trade and TP in uh, to the tower and flank them from the south side. So just really nicely set up by Sacred. It's gonna buy them a lot of time, as you mentioned. And Ben Jazzy's right near the top of the net worth chart alongside HFN uh, at this point. And Leo's tile, three minutes, three and a half minutes after picking up that Midas, he's got the blink anyway. He doesn't even have the gold talents. This is pretty much exactly where you want to be as Puck, 20 minutes in, all sequencing aside. So now at this point, Puck can get actually whatever he wants. Going for a Yule Scepter, just going to be a, a nice little response defensively, of course, if he gets hit with the root or something like that. But also taking out the bear, taking out the guard from the Ember Spirit. It's a, definitely a nice mixed survivability item. And it was just insane on the puck as well. <laughs> Who's going to say no to that, right? So uh, Sacred are getting quite a bit of space around the map. And for Pain, they're not, like, far behind, right? Like, they're still doing okay with uh, quite a few of their heroes. They have an Ember Spirit who is going to go for the physical damage-based build in this particular game. Their late game isn't terrible, but for sure it's about at this time with Pain Gaming's draft where they really want to be in control. That's where Brewmaster is one of the best heroes in the game, and so far his splits, I mean, some of them have been okay, but for the most part, not quite good enough. We have another Taxi going up towards top lane. They don't know how many heroes are going. It's going to be pretty much everybody, and eh, that'll be just a, a push secured and defended here from the Sacred side. Yeah, I, I feel that Sacred should feel fairly comfortable taking it into the late game, so I, I really do agree with their decision to be defending their towers here against this lone druid. Don't want to give that uh, entire pain lineup the extra influx of gold. I mean, it certainly uh, doesn't feel like pain gaming has sold out on the early game. We see the Ember go for the, you know, throwback kind of Battle Fury build, so he'll scale nicely. He'll be able to uh, respond to the, the pushes of the waves by the Underlord and the Luna, uh, as well as the Puck. R really, actually, three great split push heroes. Uh, for Sacred side, so understandably so, he goes for that build. With the Radiance, you know, HFN should scale uh, rather decently as well, but I think Sacred are, are more than comfortable uh, taking their Luna deep, and especially with the Midas route that the Puck has gone for. Speaking of the Puck, jump forward, Coil, it just catches the Bear. Uh, split is going to be thrown out now. Eclipse coming from the north side, from the Luna. She's going to be thrown up in the air immediately, and it looks like they will just look to extract themselves from this engagement, the Pain side, but they do expend a Primal Split here, so Sacred more than willing to pursue, although mid lane is being pushed in by Ember, so they may think of defending that here. And it looks like this engagement will dissipate for the time being. But Primal Split used by the Radiant side and really nothing committed uh, of major consequence. There was an Eclipse from Sacred, but uh, that's not, I think, uh, as big of a part as their toolkit. They see KRD. Matthew was not in that last fight, so he does a hook shot. How sick is this clockwork? They actually have no idea where KRD went. 
It looks like he's uh, not sick enough, but still, uh, yeah, the lone, the uh, Brewmaster, rather, they definitely need the split of the Brewmaster oh, a the lot flare. more so than Sacred need the Eclipse. And now, just going in for this Tier 2 tower, the rest of the Pain Gaming side are kind of scrambling to get some sort of split push pressure elsewhere, but Tekka with the Firestorm is going to make that very difficult. Of course, Masha is going to cut him off. This is a hero with a pipe and mech. And he's just going to start channeling up that get out of jail free card. Uh, he's going to pipe up actually, and he's in a lot of trouble now. That got canceled, and he's going to get beaten down by the bear. Hookshot in is going to catch HFN. Can they focus down the main bear? They will be able to, and get Banjaz a double kill. Uh, we're going to call that an elaborate bait from the Underlord because he had his reinforcements coming in, and they also got the bottom tier two tower. Sacred are just making all the right calls. 9-0-4 on the Luna. We talked about HFN being unchecked, but they've done an excellent job protecting Benjaz, and Benjaz perhaps even better as far as his decisions on when to join these team fights. We talked about, you know, the Underlord and his purpose uh, as partly being inviting them to engage on him, and Pain take the bait in that mid lane, and it buys more than enough time for Sacred. Well, they're gonna jump uh, to towards Benjaz and towards top lane. Though Tavo does not actually have his ultimate. He does have some backup for King RD, but he's gonna run out of mana for Finger of Death? He's got to run now. He can't actually get any of these kills. They do chain them both down. Six searing chains from Masha. Finger Death now going in towards Benyaz. He's going to pop the BKB and look for a target. He's going to settle for the easy meat on the side in the lion. That's not exactly how you want to use your BKB. Yeah. But uh, still for pain, that was an incredibly aggressive move from them. Jump in. They're going to look to cheese out the Rubik. Damage is not quite high enough. Now Matthew caught Duster in the cogs with the puck coming in with the orb. I think they should have enough to kill off Duster, especially if he snaps this coil. Because Matthew just right on top of his face and he will get the kill. Split now out from the brew is going to look for this clockwork but even if the clockwork dies, it doesn't really matter all that much. He puts up the cogs, still dying to the radiance though, is going to go down and now it's the puck who's in a little bit of trouble. Now if he goes down, it's a little bit more costly but can't quite catch up to him. Is he actually going to blink to the south and should be fine. Tekka cancelled his rift earlier so he doesn't have it now. Uh, the Luna should just leave Tekka to die. Tekka, I'm sure, just praying for the trolls to help him out there. Not going to happen. And turns out going a little bit too far is going to be the downfall of that particular yeah. play from Sacred. I mean, still, again, it's definitely a bit of an overextension, but more than worth the 10-second BKB charge to, to feel safe for Benjais. He's just worth too much uh, right now. They do expend the split again, so... Even with these heroes on the sideline, Payne not going to really feel comfortable to posture up aggressively underneath any of the objectives of Sacred. And in all the meantime, meanwhile, Benja's just farming away, you know, working on his butterfly. He's going to get all the more difficult to bring down uh, when that does finally come out. But it's a nice set of kills for Payne. And, you know, I, I talked about them not being able to take an objective. Um, perhaps I spoke a little too soon. They're going to look oh, at Matthew. Roche. Matthew, though, he's going to jump in right before this Roche goes down. Orb comes through the silence. Is there. Mosh is going to be the one to pick up the Aegis. And they are going to be able to burst down the puck still, though. Jumping into the pit is Benjaz on the Luna. And because they have to pick up the Aegis on the Ember Spirit, he brings down the lone Druid. Now Ember going to Remnant out. Luna actually getting fairly low. She does still have the BKB, though. Really not feeling all that threatened. And it'll be a two for two in the pit overall, but they get the Aegis as well. And now chasing forward for more King RD. He has no spells at his disposal. He'll be brought down. Masoku's right click from the Rubik will finish him off. Mech up from King Tekka and right underneath the tier two, conveniently enough, is the sacred lineup. And they should be able to get this with ease. There's just not enough durability to match up against a level three Eclipse. It just does way too much damage. Benyaz, of course, was right clicking the entire time. The Jump in from the clockwork, making sure that no one actually left the pit. The mad scramble for the Aegis. Definitely working out for Sacred's favor, but at the end of the day, if you're paying gaming and if you have no heroes on top of Benjaz, you're not going to win that fight. You absolutely need to make sure that this Luna is pressured. And they'll try to catch some heroes in the back. Oh, Masoku missed the train. That sucks, <laughs> man. <laughs> Probably uh, let your Rubik know when you're actually using that spell. But at any rate, they do win the team fight and also take down this Tier 3 tower. So... Pain Gaming went losing team fight after team fight. There is another split here for the Brewmaster, but uh, the split has to answer Benyaz. Benyaz has to be answered by someone, and they've been doing a pretty good job on the Lion, making sure that they initiate somewhat on the Luna Keeper stun, but it's going to be harder and harder to actually kill her off off those stuns since we do have a butterfly, a fat stat item coming on this Luna. And of course, BKB slot nine seconds yeah. is of course very helpful as well. Smoke up. HFN, the main hero, is pushing in. That's a very, very fragile hero. He will get out of there just in time. Leo Style is on the front lines with the Yule Scepter, with the Phase Shift, 
He's the hero you want to have break up against these smokes. There is a four staff on the lion. No blink, though. So his initiation is a little bit clunky. They do see Leo. He's going to phase shift preemptively and will blink out, though. The clockwork? Well, he'll have a four staff to help him out. Duster got left behind now. What is it with these people? I'm not telling their supports they're retreating. <laughs> oh, man. I feel for Duster. I feel for the Rubik. Leo Style's still looking for a coil. Off to the side. We'll get hexed up. And they have the finger of death doing a lot of damage. The pipe comes in just in time and saves him. Now the coil onto Masha with the Veil Amplification. They'll bring him down as well, and look at these glaives just start flying onto the Brewmaster, now in full retreat. Matthew's going to circle around, looking for some cogs. Kiara D lands a pretty nice impale, but it's not nearly nice enough. They will lift the clockwork one more time. The Earth Aspect, three, two, one. We'll resume the main form. Flare just a little bit off, but still they get the silence, so he can't blink out. The Brew will fall as well. It's a four for nil, and Sacred are just crushing these team fights. Yeah, I mean, that death mid lane was totally on the Rubik. Come on, it's a giant green indicator on the ground when the spell's being used, but oh, that time with the Rubik, Ogre... Rubik has Primal Split. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I mean, if we didn't already think this game was over, mid lane Narax here going to drop uh, before the buyback uh, comes out from either of the Lion or the Brewmaster. And Masha on the Ember Spirit doesn't have one available, unfortunately, for Pain Gaming. So they'll give up at what looks like at least two lanes here. And the split going to come up from the Rubik, as you mentioned. It's going to be rather um, useless as far as fighting, but very useful as a zoning tool. Oh, wait. Do you teleport out as the Brewlings? Yes. All right. Yes, you do. Today I learned. <laughs> Hey, if you get left behind again, like, <laughs> that was definitely on, uh, that was definitely on, uh, I guess the team, not necessarily on Rubik. I would have expected to be teleported out there, but still two racks now in the lead. Not yeah. to mention a 14k net worth advantage. They have all the defensive auras here from the Underlord with yet another one coming in from Crimson. Uh, will be picked up momentarily. And for Pain, they just don't have enough damage. This Ember Spirit's doing what he can. The Lone Druid, where is his bear I mean, he has a hood he has ac but it just doesn't seem like it matters he's just getting blasted him yeah. and the bear they're always a little bit too clustered yeah hfn is where all of the net worth it feels of pain is kind of funneled in i, I guess they just have too many ways to to control the ember spirit uh, that we really haven't felt masha's presence in these fights and also going for the kind of less team fight oriented build more split push oriented build with the early battle fury as opposed to uh kind of putting his his uh, faith into oh, the, the, the more magic damage oriented build. They, they find the bear, yeah. That's a big kill for them to find. Um, before going high ground, so instant resummon for HFN. This is where Battle Fury is, I guess, the better build when you're trying to defend in a desperate situation like this. Lone Druid does get rooted down. He really has to watch his bear, though. If he loses that, it is pretty much his death for 100 seconds. Jumping with the BKB. Look at the split out, and Masoku will again get left behind by the rest of his squad. Matthew's gonna hook shot out, try to TP, but King RD now is a blink dagger. They'll stun the clockwork, bring him down as well. Take down two heroes, looking for more. They probably won't find anyone. Sacred yeah. will lose two heroes here, and you know, they're probably gonna take that as a sign to just wait for the next Roshan before they try a similar play, but at least for pain they hold, right? Now it's at this point pain trying to stall for some time. They can push waves out, uh, so they can maybe get in their waves far enough out uh, that they'll be able to get the bear one more time. Rush, but yeah. Eclipse goes on to HFN. They're going to change their mind, focus on the Spirit Bear. The root is there from the Pit of Malice, and they'll kill off the bear again. Lone Druid essentially dead for 60 seconds, and Duster will maybe be literally dead now. Beam is there, and the right clicks from the Luna are substantial. Duster will try to juke right into the clutches of Tekka. That is going to be a useless Lone Druid for 50 seconds and no Ogre. Though there is not much of a creep wave here. I'm not sure if Sacred can do this. Well, <laughs> they seem to disagree. Okay, well, when you, when you have Dark Rift, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, think I, I, we have to go back to the point. On the top racks. Stun now, go. They, they don't have to stun anyone. You can't stun the racks. Uh, unless Meteor Hammer stuns Rax, maybe, never know, Ice Frog, please. They'll just start blending the towers with these glaives. It's a thing of beauty once you start killing off these structures as Luna. Unless you're, you know, on the opposing end. Tavo's just getting obliterated by those glaives, and off to the south. They found the Ember Spirit, he's silenced. He will have the ability to jump out soon, but he's just perma-rooted. He will buy back, but it doesn't matter, GG's already called. Luna's just killing everyone with her glaives, that's really disgusting. Yeah, and we really did see the strategy come together 
uh, through the game for Sacred. I mean, with Leo style having a veil and the the glaives coming out from Benjaz, a farm the farm Luna was what they were trying to get to, and those brewlings were an absolute non-factor. We saw the brew have a very good timing on a blink dagger, make use of it uh, first, killing off King Tekka in the bottom lane. Uh, they get a good amount of damage done to that tower. Uh, but you have to just kind of go back to that brilliant move that Sacred made uh, when Pain had a, a very sizable lead in the early game. Their Lone Druid was very scary. Their team fight as five looked very good with the Blink Brewmaster. Uh, and they kind of bait them into thinking they're going for that tier one trade bottom, flank them top lane. And that was the opening that they needed. Really opened the map back up. Benjaz, I mean, you know, he goes beyond godlike without dying in the game. Tons of gpm i'm sure as well so uh really just want to take it back to that point for sacred i think that's where the game turned i mean when you're running a draft like this it's all about momentum you got to win the fight with the split and then take the objective while a split is cooling down and then repeat that repeat that repeat that you botch one of those fights and suddenly you're just kind of scrambling for for an answer because your cooldowns are not lining up with the next fight it's really awkward so sacred are going to find victory here in this first game. A pretty convincing one at that, but uh, we did see some some pretty decent play from Payne. For sure, they can give Sacred a run for their money, and that's going to be happening in game two, guys. Don't go anywhere. That's going to be coming up momentarily. <laughs> 